we, we met in Toronto. I was a film student in Toronto. I was, at the time I was going, actually I, I was studying art history at York University, but I had been a film student at Ryerson prior to that. And so we had some mutual friends, mutual acquaintances. He was up, um, this was in 1987, and he was up to Toronto a couple of times, partly to give some screenings, and, and also because he, his good friend Jim Tenney lived in Toronto at the time and had been ill um, not too long before that, and so he was partly up to visit Jim and partly to show some films. And we had mutual friends, and that's how and when we met in Toronto. I had only seen a few of the you know most famous works that they tend to show in film school, Dog Star Man, as you mentioned, and Window Water Baby Moving, Mothlight, that sort of thing. You know, but he was such a prolific filmmaker. He actually made over 350 films, so I had a lot more to catch up on, which I did subsequently. And you know, I've seen almost all of his films now, but I haven't. I still have to admit, I have. There's still a last handful of films that I haven't even seen yet. So, hmm. yes, he did say that, <laughs> and it's funny. I used to always say, well, you know, I appreciate the. Uh, that it was dedicated to me in some sense, but it, it, it took me a long time to see that film. It was not one of my personal favorites for a long time, although I appreciate it more now than I did at the time. Um, it's, it's got some actually beautiful hand-painted sections in it. It's really gorgeous, you know, but it wasn't... Um, well, it was... I, I don't know. There was, something, there was something about it that was more... Uh, literal and referential and spiritual suggestions of some sort that it took me a while to get into it you know I, I didn't have an immediate positive response to it like I do have to some of his films like you know there are some that just really knocked me out right away that were like my total favorites and and it that one took me longer to to appreciate but um, yeah it, it is very beautiful film well, now the, the, the arts, it's, it's hard to make a generalization, U.S. versus Canada, because also within the country it's different in different places. And, and um, so I, th I think it's really great that there's a very vibrant art scene, obviously in Montreal, a vibrant film scene, you know, and that there's a lot of involvement in avant-garde film here. That isn't the case all across the country or, or all across America. There tends to be little pockets in both the U.S. I mean, I would, you know, speaking specifically of avant-garde film, there tends to be little pockets here and there of dedicated followers, and it's still not widely um, appreciated, widely seen amongst you know the population in general. I don't think in either country. Well, the, um, I don't make films. I write about films sometimes, and so I'm you know, and I'm and I'm involved in continuing to manage Stan's uh, film collection and he keep that circulating. And I do look at other people's films. I often get people send me you know things to to look at and. And I, there's a bit of a, uh, a film scene in Victoria where I live. And for example, I recently wrote a piece on the uh, for uh, an exhibition on the films of Richard Raxlin. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he actually lived in Montreal and taught at Concordia for years. He's in Victoria now, and he's a filmmaker that I've gotten to know there, and I really like his work. And so I was uh, involved with that exhibition and writing about his work. My personal favorite, you know, I've, it's 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 hard to say that, but I but I always come back to Passage Through a Ritual. Probably is my all-time favorite film that's going to be shown tomorrow night. It's a really beautiful work. It's one of Stan's sound films. You know, I don't. I guess you know that the majority of his films were intentionally silent, um, but uh, this was one of his occasional sound films with the music of Philip Corner. It's a really really beautiful and moving film that I absolutely love. I think because he was so true to the process of art making all his life and was so prolific that if you see the whole body of his work, what you can take away from that as an artist, I suppose, is just to be, as he was, true to the process, true to the demands of the art, and um, to be as honest as you can possibly be in the making. You know, he was an extremely in his filmmaking, in his art making practice, he used to like to say, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, yeah. you know, and that that was what you had to do, and be open to the, whatever the forces are that are working through you, which he sometimes referred to in the classical sense as the muse. He used to like to quote the poet Robert Creeley, who would say, the muse, you know, she just tells you, do what you're told, you know, <laughs> and so you had to sort of be open to these forces and to allow the work to, to come through you and to be true to the process and to be, and uh, to to not to impose your will upon it and to always be true to that 
and and by being true to the art all his life and true to that process and never wavering in that he has left us this incredible legacy of you know a huge number of incredible films and and so I guess that's what an artist can take away from it that it is possible to do that for 50 years and and never lose your integrity